In this clip from RMDS Labs webinar, you'll hear from Jingyu Ma, research assistant and PhD candidate in the field of computational modeling and simulation at Old Dominion University. By the end of this video, you'll have a general understanding of how to train an autonomous vehicle model and to test the performance under different driving conditions. And the next, I'm going to uh, talk about one by one, like how to simulate. So, uh, there is a, a software called Unity. Usually we use Unity to editing some game or uh, do some 3D game and editing the environment. Definitely there are other softwares, but this is the one I used. I used Unity to edit the 3D city. And, uh, and after editing the city, I can import the city to color uh, as the environment. And uh, after host the city, uh, as a client, I can uh, connect it to Kala and uh, drive. And uh, while I was driving, at the same time, the driving logs can be recorded and uh, saved on the drive. After achieving the driving log, the driving log can be used for training purpose using reinforcement learning method or other method to train the model. And the model can be used back uh, to test purpose. The model can be used to control an autonomous vehicle and back in the color environment to test the performance. So that's the logic how it go, how it runs. And how to simulate. So this is a picture I took this afternoon. Uh, it's just get connected with a theory. So this theory I have is the Logitech theory, which is usually used for playing the the racing game and the, the benefit of using this device is can capture the human driving behaviors such as braking, steering, and etc. And if you have more money, you may consider to get a driving simulator to have more uh, levels of dimension and the levels you can control. And the how to drive uh, is uh, so on the right side of this picture is a global map that is host uh, the Kala simulator. On the left side, I'm connected a blue vehicle and driving the blue vehicles uh, in, inside the world. So from the world, I can see myself that's the uh, blue car I'm driving. So while I was driving, I was driving that, oh, excuse me. While I was driving that, uh, I need to make sure I'm always follow the rules, uh, like don't break the yellow line and uh, keep distance from others and uh, always behave as I'm driving in real car on the world. So I try to be as real as possible. And uh, there are several ways I can use for recording things. The first one I can use is I can use color building function such as hit R button to record the image. And uh, this is the uh, image uh, recorded. And the second way I can use this, I can write some Python code to write the LiDAR scan to the log file by myself. And, uh, uh, and, uh, and also when I do in the program, uh, I can control like the time interval uh, or frequency I want to record. Uh, for example, I can record one image every for every second, because by default it has too large. Uh, too uh, the, the frequency is too large, uh, which will make the computer real uh, a little slow. So I may also change different uh, time interval based on my need. And on the right side, uh, this table shows you an idea. Actually, it's a dummy table. I put I put it here. It's a dummy one. It's show you idea how the how the table can be organized. So the first column is recorded the time stamp for for each second, for example, each second. And also image left, image head, and image right show you the the folder and the file name for each for each uh, image that is uh, captured. And also lidar column show you the lidar location the file captured. And the, here, the, the steering column. Steering column is the uh, like you are uh, steering the uh, you're recording the the angle or the extent of your steering. 
So it can be from zero to two, or it can, can also be from uh, minus one to one, depends, how, uh, depends on your settings. And also the uh, throttle uh, is something related to how you accelerate. All right, so next, um, uh, this, is, this page is about how to model. So the first, first step is always is to clean the data, clean the log file, so you have a clean table like this. The second why is after you having this table, you can throw the table inside uh, using the reinforcement learning method such as Keras or sklearn, such kind of thing, uh, throw the table inside and uh, try to use those model to uh, to train the model. And after you compile your model, uh, it can be uh, uh, exported in a format like a, a hierarchical data format. And uh, using that model, the way to use that model is uh, you have your new input, including your uh, recognized the time, uh, time and the uh, images and the LiDAR just through the data inside as inputs to the model. And then the model will generate some output. Output is looks like the steering and the uh, throttle. That is the output. So that is how you are going to control the vehicle like this. So we can, from this, uh, this uh, picture, we can see this. And the, and after that, how uh, how I will I uh, did the test? I set a uh, initial speed like uh, twenty mph, and spawn an AV somewhere on the map, and just let it run. And the and the the, uh, the vehicle will start a trip, and it may cross some lines. That's fine, and it uh, may uh, do something weird. That's also fine, and eventually it will hit something. Usually. Uh, either some obstacles, and that's the end of the trip. So several factors are observed and tracked, uh, such as the, the length or how long it's going to take, and uh, how many times it's crossed the lines, or uh, it, what kind of ob obstacles it hits, uh, such as trees or hits a walker. And uh, there can be more tests uh, to be designed and uh, to be done such as the exclusive vehicle test that's only run the autonomous vehicle in the virtual environment and there's nothing else. And, or you can also add something, add some vehicles running together with you. You can also run, add some pedestrians or cyclists to the environment. And also this framework can be uh, tested under different environments. What if it's raining or what if driving under shadows, because sometimes the sunlight may have different direction and the shadows really uh, uh, affect on the image part. And uh, uh, since I, I just uh, start uh, this uh, study this semester or later this year, so everything is still ongoing. So there's currently uh, still an ongoing project. And what else I can do? Uh, so there are two interesting topics. You enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe for more content like this. Visit grmds.org to view Jingyu's full 30-minute talk. Through the link in the description, you can take advantage of a complimentary premium one-month membership to access webinars, online courses, data sets, workflow collections, and much more. Visit our data science ecosystem at grmds.org.